let's go on to what probably happens in most melanoma patients in community practice, which is they get treated with a single agent PD-1 inhibitor. Uh, I think Caroline had some very nice data, Georgina, uh, looking at the long-term outcomes in some of the Pembro patients. Can you tell us what, what was the take-home message? Yeah, so the take-home message was, so she presented results from Keynote 006, which is the phase three randomized trial of two different dosing schedules of pembrolizumab versus ipilimumab. And we know there was a clear benefit in terms of response rate, progression-free survival, and overall survival compared with ipilimumab. But what was most interesting about what she presented is data on patients in this trial, people only got the pembrolizumab for two years. So it was about data, what happens once you stop the pembrolizumab. There were 555 patients who had received pembrolizumab and only just over between 100 and 150 actually got to the two year mark and got the full uh, schedule of pembrolizumab. It was reasonably short follow up, nine months, and we saw that it was, you know, over 90% of patients were still in response, but there were some relapses. And we're now just looking at, okay, you've had a response or you've been on pembrolizumab with clinical benefit for a long period of time, you're off it, the majority of patients at this short follow-up are still doing well and remain in response. What happens when you stop and re-challenge with anti-PD-1? Will patients respond? There was a great poster uh, at ASCO. Again, small numbers which suggest you may, but we still don't have that data. That was one of the major take-home messages. The other one was the um, acquired resistance, meaning once you have a response, and now this is taking the whole study, not just the patients who got the two years, so everybody who had a response to pembrolizumab, what happened to their response over time. And we did, did see, interestingly, at two years, um, only approximately 70% were still in response, which means 30% of responders are developing acquired resistance. So that's another issue we need to consider. Yeah, I was struck by the initial data that we saw last year, again presented by Caroline Robert. 97% of those who had a CR stayed in remission at a year. Now it's 91% of even PRs in stable patients, so you can even stable be stable. Patients. Stable the patients. One, that's yeah. the one that really stood out to yeah. me, because that's just not the way I had previously thought about this. I mean, I, I often think about patients who have stable disease that are getting out a ways, starting to be on the lookout, that are going to have concern that they're going to progress, and yet that data set argues that that's not from the randomized data. I don't know. I was concerned, because of the ones that have progressed, they were mainly from that group. In the stable. For sure, but you know, they, we're talking about yeah, more than yeah. two years later. Yes. Right? No, well, well, no, because they were the ones who got two years, and we've only got median follow-up of nine months. So that's why I'm so, I'm cautious. So, so, I think it's early yet, yeah. and I'm worried. I'm think, worried about that. I'm still worried about yeah. that SD group, the stable disease. So, so, so I, I agree with Jason. I think that I was, it was striking that you had the stable disease patients. That were Many of them were, the majority of them were nine months out, and they had not progressed at that point in time. I think it shows several points. First of all, there were a very small number of patients. I think it's really difficult for us to truly make a statement on what stable disease means there. But the second thing it also shows, and again from the surgical side that we see all the time, is that you may on radiographs have a Absolutely. tumor that, that is there, but yet when we surgically resect this or we biopsy it, there's no viable tumor left. So this is fibrosis, this is inflammation, but there's no viable tumor left. And to me, that was sort of the take home message from this, that many of these stable disease patients, maybe we need to reconsider, you know, if you stay stable for a long time, is there actually any viable tumor left? Do we need to continue this anti pd one therapy for the full two years? I think we don't have the answer to this yet, but I think that this is sort of the next step in this where we need to really consider sort of more biopsies and trying to understand how long do we really need to continue in these patients with stable disease. Yeah, but the nice thing is that all of us have the patients who had a three centimeter lung mass and maybe some other small volume disease, got treated with a single agent PD-1, and they come back, they never regress, they never grow, they just yeah. sit there, and then you know it's biopsy proven, so there's tumor, and a year later, two years later, three years later, they're still coming back. And that, that's, those are the patients in that category. Yeah. And I wish I could understand what was going on, but yeah. Georgina? No, yeah, I was just going to say the same anecdote. Mm. In fact, I've got quite a few patients yes. on Keynote 006, and the ones on Pembro have now stopped. And there's one in particular that has in transit very pigmented raised in transit disease throughout his whole leg. We have a biopsy before he started, melanoma. 
We have a biopsy at week one starting to regress, and we've done multiple biopsies now these past two years. It's just macrophages. And it's melanophages. And, but it looks the same as when he started it's the trial. Exactly. He looks exactly and the it's, same. And it's, again, we see this on the legs, and it's melanophages, and it's sort of no viable tumor. So I think that also sort of, I think that for us within the melanoma community, I think this is also challenges us now to really to understand who are these patients that have sort of visible disease, or we think is visible disease, yet there's no biological disease there. How do we pick these patients out? Because also, I think we do have to remember that continuing many of these therapies, such as the anti pd one therapy, if we continue them beyond one year, up to two years, there are more chronic side effects that we see with this, including arthrologists and so on, that can become debilitating for some patients. So, provocative question then, do any on the panel feel like there is a justification for stopping patients at any point. Um, and this is something we also talk about with each other all the time when, when we see each other. And, um, you know, I think we all feel good when we see CRs, then you're like, sure, maybe we could talk about it, but what about PRs and how much of a PR and, and so on and so forth. And I know that in, in my practice, uh, you know, after about six months to a year of treating a patient, if there's a, a quality response, which I would say 50 to more, more percent, I start to entertain and talk to them. Like, what, what does it mean to you to come to the clinic and what would it mean to you to stop the treatment? But, you know, I think some people are on the end of like, look, never stop because we don't know what happens. And, you know, and just like patients, some of them want to keep coming, some don't want to come at all. So I think, I think it's a really wide open question. I, I feel the same way you do. I assume, d does everyone else have the same view Absolutely. that at some it's point you have to treatment. stop? And, and I, I think that this is also one of the challenges that we face is that with an anti-PD-1 therapy, we go for two years, yet with anti cd 4 therapy, it's usually four doses. So there, even you have the four doses and you stop, and we know there are a good group of patients that will have this stable disease, but they're really, like you said, Jeff, they don't grow, they don't get smaller, but they just sit there for a long time. But yet with this therapy, the way it's set up, we go for the full two years. But I agree. I don't think we yeah. necessarily need to do that. I mean, that. I think that what's really going to be interesting moving forward is I think most of us have been having those conversations when we had patients achieve a CR very quickly of how long do we feel like we need to treat them. And again, like you said, the provocative part is, is with these results is, is are there other patients who haven't achieved a CR but where you would feel comfortable stopping them earlier on? And I think that's a moving target, but certainly be something to be interesting to sort of think so about over the next few years. It's duration, but the other question is how much drug, meaning... Mm -hmm. Who do you decide to treat with the combination? Who do you decide to treat with the single agent? So Jason, how, how do you look at this when the patient comes into clinic? How do you have that discussion? Well, right, so to make this sort of binary, we're gonna just postulate this as a BRAF wild type patient. That's if you correct. add in the mutation, you get a whole nother question about should you lead in with the targeted inhibitors. But uh, as I was mentioning previously, I mean, I, I really look at actually basically the same clinical factors that have been published uh, you know, by this group about uh, clinical factors that impact targeted therapy, because I think that those are broadly factors that impact on the outcomes of patients with melanoma. So if I see a patient who has a rapidly rising LDH that's out of the normal range, there are many sites of disease, brain metastases, which I now really strongly feel validated about and we'll talk about later, but those are really the patients where it's just a no-brainer, unless there's a clear reason that I think that there's no way they could tolerate it, that, that's what we're doing. I mean, it's just, that's what we're doing. Um, once it gets less than that, I mean, it's much more nuanced than, and I talk to the patient about toxicity and so on and so forth, but there is a certain set where I just, like, for sure that's what we're doing. Then it gets much more gray less than that.